The Home Secretary described waves of people breaching our border. Well, I'm joined now by Laura Farris, who's the Conservative MP uh, for Newbury. Hello to you, uh, Laura. Uh, refugee charities uh, have described uh, this new legislation as, as unworkable and cruel. Uh, are you worried how we're now going to be perceived uh, on the world stage following this, this new law? I think that there is a profound difference between our treatment of refugees, which is obviously something that is, you know, something that the country can take real pride in. We've taken half a million people over the last five years and the small boats issue, which I think is distinct and is a lucrative trade, which has uh, risen in the last two years from 2,500 crossings in 2020 to 45,000 last year, of whom 13,000 of those were young Albanian men, a safe country and one of our NATO allies. So the, the legislation, which was announced today but hasn't been published, is nothing to do with the country's view or treatment of refugees. It's to do with this one distinct route which has become a, just a lucrative trade for people smugglers across the channel. Yeah, the devil is in the detail, though, isn't it? It's, it's very easy to make a headline and say, you know, we're going to deport anyone who arrives on a small boat across the Channel. Where would they be deported to if they arrived with no documents? Well, let me just... Let me just kind of go back to the first thing that you said. There's no part of why I'm on your show or what the government's doing today that is intended to produce an inflammatory headline. But I think that most people know that this has become a really problematic policy area. Now, the, 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 the principle that will change as a result of this legislation, I have to say, as I said, it hasn't been published, so I haven't read it. There was just the announcement in the chamber just now that I've just come from. Um, is that anyone arriving that, by that route will be deemed to have ar arrived illegally and they won't be eligible to have their asylum application heard. Now, that doesn't mean that that same person wouldn't have the right to claim asylum. The Prime Minister has said earlier today that there are going to be announcements of new safe and legal routes through which people can take a sort of managed route to the United Kingdom if they have a good asylum claim, but they'll no longer be able to do so by getting into dinghies and making the crossing uh, uh, through the channel. Now, then there's the point of removal. You, you said quite correctly the devil is in the detail and we don't have very much yet. But I think there are two or three principles that you could take from the Home Secretary's statement today. First of all, the, there will be a number of new agreements. Obviously, none of this will really work unless the, the government reaches an agreement with France. And I think that is very much hoped for in light of the new kind of political climate and also the fact that it's the Anglo-French summit happening on Friday of this week. But also with other safe countries, we know that there's now a returns agreement with Albania where many of those arrivals come from. The Rwanda scheme has had approval in the High Court, but it's still waiting to go through its appellate stages. And otherwise, Sorry, I've just lost my earpiece. Otherwise, uh, whether those arrivals will be returned to their, their, their country of origin in certain circumstances. But where that's not possible, for example, where it's not safe, they will be returned to another safe country. And I would just make one point. This principle of removal to a safe third country isn't new, and it's not even Conservative policy. It was introduced in 2002 in the Nationality, Immigration and Asylum Act, which was David Blunkett's legislation to deal with, with an increase in immigration then. There have been various problems with its implementation, which have gone kind of to and fro over the last two decades. But the idea of removing people to claim asylum uh, from, from, you know, to, 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 to removing people to a safe third country is not originally a Conservative policy. It is now about 20 years old. Uh, Suella Braverman has already acknowledged herself uh, that this legislation pushes the boundaries of international law. How are Conservative MPs feeling today? Is there a sense of confidence that this legislation will work or are Conservative MPs even sceptical about it? Well, I, I have to say, I don't really like the construction pushing the boundaries of international law. And I, I used to be a barrister and I practised in this area of, of the law before. It is true to say that some of what they announced today is novel and therefore it is likely to need a determination potentially by the courts, uh, potentially to be referred to the European Court of Human Rights. All of that is a possibility. Um, so that is why they can't give the, the assurance of compatibility. But nothing that was announced in the statement, nothing that the Prime Minister has said about the matter so far, obviously contravenes 
uh, any of our obligations, either under the Refugee Convention or under the European Convention on Human Rights, because the principal obligation is that people have a place of safety, and nothing that has been said contravenes that. And they're not saying, by the way, as I said before, it is not the case that those same people would in no circumstances have a right to asylum. It's simply saying that if they take the route that's facilitated by people smugglers across the channel, they will not have that right because it's an illegal route and there'll be new safe and legal routes which will be opened up uh, for them to claim asylum that way. Yeah, I mean, surely opening up more safe legal uh, routes would be a more effective measure to stem these crossings. Why isn't that happening now? Why aren't they opening up more safe legal routes now? Surely that will be more effective in stemming these dangerous boat crossings. Well, I think I accept the thrust of your question, and, um, and I think that that is the next stage of the work. And I hope that when the legislation is published and when this matter is debated in Parliament, we have more information on that, because I think that it doesn't really work to simply say we're closing one particular route, even though the vast majority of the public do recognise that this has become problematic. Over 80% of the arrivals through the small boats last year were young men aged between 18 and 40. We don't typically allow um, a sort of, um, you know, a, a, an underground route that's a sort of men-only way of claiming asylum. That's not, those aren't necessarily the people that as a country we would first offer asylum to. So people recognise that the channel crossings have become a problem, but the issue of safe and legal routes is definitely one that I'm expecting more, inf I'm hoping for more information before it's debated in the coming weeks. But I would just say this, the way that safe and legal routes have been treated in the last 18 months to two years has been through country to country arrangements so for example with Afghanistan with Ukraine so we've taken in the last 12 months 164,000 Ukrainians have arrived in the United Kingdom also with Hong Kong but I accept that that doesn't provide a complete answer to the problem because you could be escaping war from elsewhere in the world and you know the route is not so well established so I think it does need to be listened to in the round considered in the round and as a backbench MP that's something that I'm looking forward to um, looking at, thinking about and then debating when the legislation is put before us. Uh, I, I do really appreciate you answering these questions so directly. We don't always get that from politicians, Laura, but there is, uh, and I'm also glad you've got a legal background because there's something I'd like uh, to put to you. Uh, there was a letter written by Suella Braverman to Conservative MPs. I'm just going to quote you a part of that letter. Uh, to see what you make of it. In the letter, she wrote, our approach is robust and novel, which is why I've made a statement under section 19 of the Human Rights Act. This does not mean that the provisions in the bill are incompatible with the convention rights, only that there is a more 50% chance that they may not be. We are testing the limits, but remain confident that this bill is compatible with international law. What does that mean exactly, as you understand it? Yeah, I Yes, so it's not the first time that that clause has been invoked. It was used many years ago in the Communications Act. It doesn't mean that the legislation is incompatible with the, with the European Convention on Human Rights, with the Human Rights Act as it is in domestic law. What it means is because they're engaging novel provisions, they're not prepared to give that assurance or they're not able to give that assurance yet, and I'm sure that the government will be acting on the advice of lawyers in, in, in saying that. But that doesn't mean that, it, it, that it's not compatible. And from what I've heard so far, and as I say, it's only a statement, so to be completely honest, Sally, I don't have the legislation in front of me to go through it clause by clause, but nothing that's been said is inherently incompatible with the Human Rights Act. OK, Laura Farris, we appreciate your thoughts on this today. Thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure. Well, let's bring in Beth Gardner-Smith now, Chief Executive of the organisation Safe Passage International. Uh, Beth, thanks so much for joining us.